Greetings, my fellow free Moses sovereign thinkers. This is LL3's newest podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful swampy mangroves of South Florida. And today's date is Friday, December 23rd, 2016. Yeah, it looks like the big wave of shopping is quiet right now. The supermarket, the big line, everyone's going ape, cutting their wrists to achieve what they can get for their loved ones. I know, I know, I know. And uh, usually a person like myself, even when I was younger, I tried all those little trendy stuff and so forth, little experimenting when I was my teens, and I'm just like, screw it. I like knowledge and information, something I can utilize. So I always tell my family, if you're going to get me something, something that's productive, not brainwashing or what's hot or not i could care less so uh yeah i'm just uh just in a supermarket right now downtown raining most of the day so i had a little bit under the weather so if you hear me sniffle don't worry i'm not doing any narcotics it's just a little bit nasal congestion and all that however i am gonna be doing the show regardless so the big hot topic is what's happened in in Israel, all right, which in Hebrew it means struggling with God. It's a lot of folks are a little bit ticked off because um, I know the the Israeli lobbyist groups are furious with uh, Barack Obama and and his administration for abstaining. All right, so you get hear all these mudslinging, come a Jew hater, anti-Semitic, and all that. However, there's a little twist to it as well, which, how come they're not, not um, against their biometric system? All right, I will add that, because that came out, I remember uh, Lisa Haven did a uh, video segment on that, and it was very interesting, and I looked it up. I'm going to address it on here as well, plus a couple other things, so we're not going to be a long segment. So, this is one here, it came from electronicintifada.net I went to my uh, I was like got on Twitter so I get you know, a lot of my stuff there so I hit my emails but I was on Twitter so I had to like wing it and this one's entitled US let Security Council pass resolution against Israeli settlements this is by Matfal Abu Turk and it says here the UN Security Council has voted voted 14-0 with one abstention the United States to condemn Israeli settlements in the Occupy West Bank. The resolution passed on Friday demands that Israel immediately and completely seize all settlement activities in the Occupy Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem, that it fully respect all of its legal obligations in this regard. It is a clear declaration that Israel settlements act- settlement activities are illegal. But as I explained on an analyst on Thursday, which you can, you can look it up for yourselves, existing resolutions that have been unenforced for decades already do that. This resolution, like its predecessor, set out no concrete consequence for Israel if it fails to comply. There are also key elements of the resolution. I do with the so-called two-state solution and the right of Palestinians to resist that are argue actually erode Palestinians' rights. But supporters of Palestinians' rights will at least welcome the Security Council's renewal of his long-standing con- condemnation of Israel's ongoing threat theft of Palestinian land. This will give impetus to initiatives that aim to end all business with the settlements. Diplomatic drama. The vote came after 24 hours of extraordinary diplomatic drama and vitriolic, vitriolic Israeli denunciations of the biggest benefactor, the United States. On Thursday, hours before Egyptian sponsored resolution was originally supposed to come to a vote, Cairo withdrew it. This followed intense Israeli pressure on Egypt's ruler. Abdullah Fattah al Sisi, including as a Tel Aviv newspaper Haaretz reported messages that the resolution was not in keeping with good relations and security cooperation between countries and would do great harm to Israel. But decisive factor appears to have been the intervention of U.S. President elect Donald Trump 
who tweeted that the U.S. should veto the resolution and phone CC personally to oppose it. Israel, Israel breathed a sigh of relief, and the Hebrew language daily, Yadoy Aharon, I hope I pronounced that correctly, ran a banner headline with the words, Thank you, CC. Egypt's military is highly dependent on about $1.5 billion in annual U.S. military aid. Talk about redistribution of wealth to all those people that criticize socialism. How come you're not attacking this? Support that only flows as long as Egypt continues to enjoy the favor of the Israel lobby. But that was not the end of the resolution. For other Security Council members, New Zealand, Malaysia, Venezuela, and Senegal gave Egypt an ultimatum that it was not going to reintroduce the resolution itself. They would bring it up for a vote on Friday. Panic mode. This Israel's back into panic mode. An unnamed Israeli official delivered a blistering attack on President Barack Obama and his Secretary of State. President Obama and Secretary John Kerry are behind this shameful move against Israel at the UN, told the official told media. The U.S. administration secretly cooked up the Palestinians an extreme anti-Israel Israeli resolution behind Israelis' back, which would be a tailwind for terror and boycotts and effectively make the Western Wall occupied Palestinian territory. The official was referring to the Western Wall Plaza, formerly Jerusalem's Moroccan Quarter, which is part of the occupied East Jerusalem. The Israeli official called the resolution an abandonment of Israel, which breaks decades of U.S. policy of protecting Israel at the U.N. The attack is all the more extraordinary since last September Obama approved the largest aid package in history for Israel, an unconditional $38 billion over the next 10 years. Wow. Okay. Also on Friday morning, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham threatened to work to block U.S. financing of the United Nations if the resolution passed. Hey, I could I could uh, commend that. <laughs> I'm not a Lindsey Graham supporter, okay? I can say, do it. Malaysia Representative Ramian Ab- Abraham told the Security Council before the vote that the draft was made more urgent by Israel's recent introduction of legislation to legitimize its land grabs in the West Bank. U.S. Ambassador Samantha Power told the Security Council after the vote that the body had reaffirmed the established consensus that settlements have no legal validity. She pointed out that until today, the Obama administration had been the only U.S. government since 1967 that did not see at least one resolution passed on the issue. The power then claimed that the U.N. had a long history of treating Israel unfairly and admonished member states for criticizing Israel and applying what she called double standards. For all the high drama of the vote, the situation on the ground remains the same. Israel continues to seize Palestinian land and built settlements while the U.N. Security Council issues words on paper. Well, here's the thing. Who, um... made Israel official, a state, or a nation. UN, not nations. So, based on that, they think they call the shots. So, and this is how I see it. Like I said, I'm very critical of the Israeli government too. All right, and, uh, and, and the people who are suffering the most are from both sides, the non-combatants, whether Israelis or Palestinians, etc. When are they going to stop treating people like parasites? It's another, like another form of tyranny. And that's how I see things in good faith. And it's nothing against the people of Israel as a whole. You got to hear all sides to this. But the real shame is a lot of folks are getting deprived on what's going on over there. The folks, you know, the people themselves need to come together and tell Tel Aviv 
or the Kazenet to stick it, as far as I'm concerned. Because the bottom line is this. They, when you really look at it, People can say, hey, you need us more, we need you, buddies. And another thing as well is, um, of course, people got to defend themselves in all means necessary. Absolutely cannot argue about that at all. If you study the history, how Israel became a fact, has a lot of merit behind it, how the Jewish people were getting deprived, especially by the uh, Palestinian government at the time, which was the British, okay? Especially just having them being disarmed. Oh, we'll protect you. There's been some grudges there for a very long time. Almost close to 70 years, I would say, 68 years right now. I think these settlements are more of a ver- of a version of gentrification. Trefic- Hopefully, I pronounced that. It was like a little tongue twister for me. Gentrification. It's happening everywhere. One thing I say: well, they abstained, so now people would be calling calling them Jew haters, they Semites, and all that. So I'm gonna be going to that. And um, let's see what has to let's see what the Gateway Pundit has to say about this. It's by Jim Ha. Says here Israel slams Jew hater Obama for final despicable act at UN. Obama's hatred of Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu and the Jewish state is well known. Last December, a report surfaced that Barack Obama intercepted communications between Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the U.S. lawmakers. The Obama White House targeted Netanyahu because he opposed their insane nuclear deal with the Iranian regime. Last October, ordered Secretary of State John Kerry and UN Ambassador Samantha Power to snub Netanyahu at the UN. Low levels, lower level US Department officials attended the Israeli Prime Minister's speech at the UN. Obama administration spent $350,000 trying to oust Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu from office. Hmm, interesting allegation there, right? In May 2011, Barack Obama urged Israel to hand over half of the Jerusalem, the Wailing Wall, the Temple Mount, Old Jerusalem, and the Tomb of Jesus Christ to the Hamas Fatah terrorist organization. In his deluded mind, handing over ancient Christian and Jewish holy sites to violent Islamists will bring peace to the region. Huh? In December 2013, Barack Obama again urged Israel to hand over ancient Christian and Jewish holy sites to Islamist terrorists. Now this, Israel accused Obama of colluding with Palestinians at the UN. The AP reported an Israeli official on Friday accused President Barack Obama of colluding with the Palestinians in a shameful move against Israel at the UN after learning. The White House did not attend to veto a security resolution condemning settlement construction in the West Bank and East Jerusalem the day before. President Obama and Secretary Kerry are behind the shameful move against Israel at the UN. The official said, the official said, the US administration secretly cooked up with the Palestinians an extreme anti-Israeli resolution behind Israel's attacks, which would be a tailwind for terror and boycotts and effectively make the Western Wall occupied Palestinian territory. He he said calling it an abandonment of Israel, which breaks decades of U.S. policy of protecting Israel at the U.N. Early, he said Israeli Prime Minister turned to President-elect Donald Trump to help head off the, the critical U.N. resolution. Although U.S. opposes the settlement, it has traditionally used its veto power as a permanent member of the, U, U, of the Security Council to block resolutions condemning Israel. Seeing that disputes between Israel and Palestinians must be resolved through negotiations, but after eight years of failed peace efforts during the Obama administration, Israel has expressed concern for the outgoing president will take an audacious step to leave his mark on the region. In recent weeks, the White House has been especially secretive about its deliberations. Well, that is a little bit cockeyed on that. Pretty strange here. But of course, you know, you got everyone going to go. Oh, you're against Israel. You're anti-Semitic. We got to support these people. 
Look, if you want to donate money to this country, so be it, but why should my tax dollars go there to, like, to every, like every other nation? Foreign aid is a redistribution of wealth. Can you get it through your thick heads? Please, prove me wrong. I dare you. But it is really off the wall. But we all know, too, Barack Obama is just another bend over Bob to the New World Order. It's like a little charade. Okay, my friends? Come on. Give me a break. This is like totally acidine. But uh, this is one thing I just start laughing because this is strange. Interesting little claims here by the Gateway Pundit. But I'm not saying there are a full of crap either because they get their sources honorably as well. So um, it is a shame we have, to, we, have to, we have to look at it. People should live together instead of going crashing each other's throats for economic purposes. All right. And this is what Herr Mark Levin has to say about this whole thing, claim to be Mr. Conservative, Mr. Patriot. But if a Republican's in there like George W. Bush, you go, yeah, well, God bless the Patriot, USA, and the New World Order, and the Patriot Act. A real police state's essential because they attack it because of our freedoms. All right, here's what Mark Levin has to say. It appears any semi Obama is working with extremist Palestinians to undermine Israel. It's from CNS News staff. And, of course, conservative talk show host Mark Levin. He's not that conservative. He's just another fraud, just like Chris Matthews, and I say that in respect, and that's my personal view, all right? I heard, heard, heard a lot of the shows in the past. I am not impressed, okay? If, if, if one of his buddies are in there, if they do a police state, that's okay. But if someone else does it, how dare they? They're anti-American, anti cottage they hate freedom. But let's hear what this double speaker has to say. Nationally syndicated radio talk show host and conservative leader, not conservative enough, I would say. Mark Levin posted a message on his Facebook page on Friday condemning the Obama administration's treatment of a UN resolution condemning Israel. Levin linked to a Reuters reporter highlighted by the rights group that cited a senior Israeli government official who said that President Obama and Secretary of State Kerry were behind the move to put the resolution through. President Obama and Secretary Kerry are behind a shameful move against Israel at the UN, Reuters quoted the unnamed official as saying the um, U.S. administration secretly cooked up with the Palestinians an extreme anti-Israel resolution behind Israel's back which would be tailwind for terror and boycotts he said. Levin started his Facebook page posting stating it appears that anti-Semite Obama is working with the extremist Palestinians and using this Israel hating UN to undermine our ally Israel Obama's a disgrace. And let's see what his full statement has to say on Facebook. Let's just say, let me just see it here. And it continues on. And anyone in this administration who participate in this, Obama's gone less than a month, but is obsessed with doing as much damage as he possibly can. Freedom-loving people all over the world who have suffered from his this failed, pathetic president, including our country. And uh, let's see if it's see what, any more crap it says on his um, right scoop site. Let's see if there's anything more continuous. All right, the right scoop. Yeah, I called the wrong scoop. Yeah, you can hit these links too, so don't be don't be too shy. And of course, talks about here about him all that cooped up. Israel, yep, that's right. It says he has all the same song and dance. There's a video on that as well. So I just sometimes just it really boggles the mind, my friends. So you, can, you can see these links and go a little bit further. And like I said before, Mark Levin, man, he's, I am not a fan of his. I am not impressed by the man. So, uh, I don't know why he gets this whole anti-Semite Semite thing going. So you can see those links. And what's funny about anti-Semitic, who are the Semites? And I'm not going to go completely bonkers here 
So it tells you multiple things what semites are. This is by um, Dr. Ken Camo and um, Motto, excuse me. And it says here about what semites are. I, I go down here. What's a political semite? The political definition of a semite: the one who is a member of any number of peoples of ancient southwestern Asian Asia, including Akkadians, Phoenicians, Hebrews, and Arabs. And it's one who is a decadent de uh, descendant of these people. They are members of a modern people speaking a Semitic language. Hey. Okay, see? Like it says here, do you do you notice the number of groups? Four, not one. Those four groups make up the Semitic people of the earth. I've already checked the following out in the two dictionaries. The term asemitic is used only of those who dislike or hate Jews or as a weapon against whoever the Jews don't like. Hey, wait a minute. There are four groups who are considered Semitic. If I hate Arabs, it is not anti-Semitism, but if I hate Jews, it is. Someone is selling a lit uh, literary world, word, world, a bill of goods in the dictionaries. If the Semitic people are comprised of four groups, and any hate toward any group to be classified as anti-Semitic. Therefore, if the Jews hate the Arabs, they are being anti-Semitic. If the Phocians hate Atticadians, it is anti-Semitism. Elected. Elected definition of anti-Semitism must not be tolerated in favor of one race. It's obvious that, that the term anti-Semitism has been fostered on the non-thinking public as only alluding to the Jews, which makes the bar definition a well-plain deception. So what they're saying is it's been dumbed down, saturated, um, abscessed, okay? It's not just the Jews or the Hebrews, Atticadians. Phocians, Hebrews, and Arabs. So you know what? So I have a question for all those people out there that despise Palestinians or Arabs. Are you anti-Semitic? Yes. Is the government of Israel that harasses people who are non-Jews but they have um, Arab backgrounds, Atticians, um, even Hebrews, and they're Palestinians? Yeah, you're anti-Semites. Plain and simple, according to this. That's from the SinosianZion.com under what is a political Semite. So it tells you about spiritual Semites and all that too, but I really had... It was funny. I, I'll, I'll do it right down here about the term anti-Semitic. It says here, like, like the last few paragraphs, like uh, second to last paragraph, or last few paragraphs, it said the term anti-Semitic began about 1883, just about the time the Zionists were growing in popularity, calling for an established homeland uh, for the Jews. It seemed that the term was needed to beat down everyone and anyone who opposed to Zionist. And remember, Zionist is a movement. It's not a religious group or ethnic group, okay? That term was anti-Semitic, which used it since every day for on anyone who opposed anything alluding to the nation of Israel or any Jewish person. It is used as intimidation and terror instrument defaming the character of anyone. You will also find this term being thrown about in the free will, free trib, Israel worshiping churches by Christians towards other Christians who refuse to bow to the knee to Israel or Messianic Judaism. Notice I said Messianic Judaism and not Christianity. And this is because the majority of saved Jews seemed to place Israel above Christ. I remember being a prophet at a, in a prophet conference in America's Keswick in the early 80s before God opened my spiritual eyes to true biblical understanding and the speaker up there warned the hearers, don't, do, don't you be on the side of those who oppose Israel. Why? Will I lose my salvation if I oppose Israel? Many Messianic Jews will equate you with being unsaved if you oppose Israel. Let them. Stand for Christ and the truths of Scripture because you are the highest form of semi, a spiritual semi in the line of Christ. So, just giving you those, um, his um, point of view. Doesn't matter if you believe in God or not, but it has some merit when you think about it. You just gotta go a little further. So, um, this is why I add this to it because he has a right to know. You can't criticize the Israeli government. Does it make you an anti-Semite? Any semi Remember that. And it's why well, folks like that claim to be Jewish, but Jews, 
okay, well, I'm Jewish, and they got this hypocritical, tyrannical viewpoint. I call them Ginos, which is Jew or Judaic in name only. And I said that to David Watson Schultz. I said that to Charles Schumer. I said that to a bunch of a lot of those including Abraham Foxman from the Anti-Defamation League. Why? Because I can, and that drives them crazy a lot more. And I recall um, the time when I had a bumper sticker on the back of my vehicle years ago. I ordered whole, like 500 of these um, by, to, from, by, from um, Jews for the Preser- Preservation of Firearms Ownership, JPFO, when the late, great Aaron Zellman did, um, was running it. I ordered, found the stickers that says the ADL lies about militias, gun control, and Judaism. I had a little good friend of mine. She laughed when I told her about that story. When I had to put it in the back of my vehicle, the ADL supporters were angry. They, I see steam come out of their ears. But, and I got people who love it. The ones who hate it couldn't say anything. They couldn't say I'm anti-Semitic. You know why? Because it was from a Jew. I was uh, endorsing a Jewish organization. I love just yanking people's chains like that. It's fantastic. I don't make any threats either. Of course, a couple of guys try to shout their screaming yell on top of the lungs. That's all they can do, but because they are not, they're not, they're, just, they're not um, articulate enough to have an honorable discussion. So, speaking of Israel, the so-called Holy Land, and I remember I got this from learning from Lisa Haven, okay, on YouTube, and I take the time to look it up. It's from truenews.com. It actually came out on December 1st. It says, Israel will require all citizens to be biometrically scanned. Is that holy? Is that is that righteous? Well, let's just, let's just see what it says here. For years, Bible prophecy teachers have warned about, about the last day's attempt to place a mark on every individual in the fulfillment of foretellings from the book of Revelation in the New Testament. But it will be the holy land of Israel itself. That will be the front runner, forerunner to implement the mark of the beast. Jerusalem Post has reported that Interior Ministry has decided to push to make joining the national biometric database, including fingerprints and facial recognition pictures, a requirement for all identity cards going forward. That will make you feel safe, right? You're in a wet dream, my friends. There has been backlash from a group called the Movement for Digital Rights. They oppose the require of Mark on the grounds that it invades privacy and it also opens individuals up to cyber hacking in the future. In 2009, the Israeli Knesset enacted the inclusion of biometric means of identification, the identity documents, and an information database law 5770 209, the biometric database law. The law establishes arrangements to enable identification and authentication of Israeli citizens by means of including biometric data in identification documents in a matter that will prevent forgery and the use of different identity. The law regulates the establishment of biometric database, which will be managed by a dedicated and separate authority. The biometric database management authority and which the biometric information will be kept in a secure and encrypted manner, separate from any other communication network, and in particular from the population registry. The database will not include any identifying information of the residents of Israel. <laughs> what a wet dream. I will proceed according to the law. Smart documentation, ID cards, and travel documents will include the following biometric means and data. An image of the facial features and images of the fingerprints of both fingers, which are means of identification intended for preventing fraud and identity theft. I think the Third Reich, they're having one big climatic legacy. Okay, so the Nazis are like... We'll, we'll want something like this for a long time. Please. The smart documentation, which includes many over and covert security measures that cannot be forged, will provide its holder with personal security and peace of mind against document forging and ide- against identity theft and impersonation. Other benefits include the smart ID card will allow its holders 
should they wish to do so, to safely identify themselves online from home and save significant time and hassle when obtaining government services from government websites using a personal password for electronic identity authentication. Oh, like it sounds so passionate and so caring, right? Come on. The smart car will allow the use of certi- cer- certified electronic signature for those who choose it. Use Passport is a is at a global forefront of using sophisticated anti-counterfeit me- counterfeit measures and it's designed according to the standard of the International Civil Aviation Organization under the auspice of the UN. Ooh, can we say New World Order? Absolutely. More than 100 countries are already including passports and smart electronic travel documents under the standard. The technology embedded in the new passport will enable fast travel at airports and as a broader border controlling crossings in Israel and in the world will faci- facilitate the process of border control. How will proponents of Israel as the centerpiece of Bible prophecy respond to this news that the Holy Land may actually be the first nation to require a mark? How can Israel be God's favored nation and implement the anti God forerunner to the mark of the beast. Will ev- evangelical leaders call out Israel for this, or they will continue to blindly ignore other actions, such as celebrations of homosexuality and their apparent collections to ISIS? Well, it says here, Revelation chapter chapter 13, verses 16 to 18 says. Also, it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or on the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark. That is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let anyone, let the one who understands and calculate the number of the beast, for it's, it's the number of a man, and his number is 666. So, Israel, the so-called Holy Land, wants to support this. Are they waiting for tribulation on Armageddon? They want it so quickly? Come on. This is why I have to laugh. I like to hear all these so-called Israel lovers, sympathizers, and ones that are being paid on the table, under the table, getting kickbacks for supporting the so-called Holy Land. I know the Israeli people, the Jews, and the honorable Christians, and even the people who are Muslims by faith, are saying, what in the hell are you doing? That's what's scary now. So this is why when I hear about Israel, this, Israel, that, we got to support their government and all that. The hell with it. What they're doing here is unacceptable, null and void, and I guarantee you one thing, it will backfire on those bastards and vultures in the Knesset. Hopefully I pronounced that, pronounced it right, in the Knesset. It will blow back in their faces. I guarantee you that. And you believe I'm going to say, oh, well, no, it's not going to be public. It's not going to be the public. Yeah, tell it to the people. The criminal elements in that nation are going to be really going to use it for their own personal gain and have these little secret files, easier access, convenient for them, miserable for the people of that nation. So you know what? Piss on your New World Order platform. You are part of the problem, not the solution. Deep down inside, you know I'm right. And the people of Israel need to rise up and use this biometric stuff as pieces of um, the the defecated garbage. So, enough of that on Israel and this whole thing with the settlement and their tyranny too. Ooh, okay. How are you looking so far? Wow, okay. That was a good period of time there. That's, that's fine. And um, let me just see. I'm just checking a few things out. Sorry about that. Oh, good, good, good. Nothing, right? Let me see. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, I'm just checking a few things here. Okay, no defects. That's good. Okay, I'm going to be a couple more items here. Next, this came out yesterday to be exact. It's from uh, J.D. Hayes, Kevin on Natural News. This is California should be stripped of electoral college votes due to high number of illegals in the C- California census. Sorry about that. I'm not saying I'm a bit under the weather. It says here, it says here, no one, no one has protested the election of GOP-nominated Donald J. Trump more than a state and local government officials in California. 
after expressing general outrage that he was able to defeat their chosen candidate, Democrat Hillary Clinton, their audience turned towards anger and defiance. They have pledged, for instance, to oppose his efforts to enforce immigration laws by deporting those who are in our country illegally and by cutting off foreign assistance to California's many sanctuary cities. None of this is surprising given the Golden State, I call it the police state, by the way, has been ruled by one political party for decades as and it's about as far left as it gets when it comes to ideology. But said that, what about the sanctuary cities? What about the vast number of illegal aliens who reside in California? State lawmakers and activists have decried the fact that Clinton won the popular vote but did not manage to capture enough electoral votes. 270 to claim victory. It is believed that all of her popular vote margin came from California. Her huge victory in the state gave her all of its 54 electoral votes as well. She is up by more than 2 million a last count in the popular vote. Nearly all that margin came from California. The state with the highest population of illegal aliens, 2.4 million. Here's the thing about the U.S. Census Bureau count illegal aliens as part of the 10-year census. That it is used to be a portion of the House seats in Congress to each state. It is important because each state's electoral votes are aligned with the number of congressional districts they have. So in other words, some states like California have outsized apportionment and thus outsized electoral college votes. They have large illegal immigrant populations. Even if people here illegally cannot vote in federal elections, the mere fact they are counted as part of the U.S. Census is then used to apportion House seats and electoral votes gave the states with high illegal immigrant population more say in deciding who should be president than they should have. That means, if anything, California's entire electoral college tally should be discarded because it is artificially inflated. And what if there were to happen, not only would Trump would have uh, even bigger than he did over Clinton, it would mean that higher illegal immigrant states would no longer have more of a say in governing the country that they supposed to have. By comparison, the state of Texas, as of 2010, had about 1.8 million illegal aliens, and though Trump won there by a nine-point margin, his victory was only about 800,000 votes. So you could make the argument that the state electoral votes are outsized. The bluest part of the state are homes to the most illegal immigrants. If they weren't in Texas or the country, perhaps those districts would not be in Democratic hands. There are all sorts of possibilities. The fact rem- facts remain that anyone in the country illegally is a violation of the established U.S. law. They are violating congressional will. They are thumbing their nose at our legal system and our Constitution. They have no inherent right to be here, and the U.S. has every legal right to make its own immigration rules. This includes, by the way, allowing open borders someday for giving all persons, citizens or not, the right to vote. That hasn't happened yet, and it isn't likely to happen anytime soon. Before it does, however, it, we will likely undergo yet another census 2020 if we really want a true representation of American citizens in Washington, D.C., and we want our presidential electors to re- re- reflect the true citizenry, then perhaps the presidential uh, and Congress, Congress will address this statutory loophole before then. Until that time, the Democratic presidential nominee who win court California ought to be thankful. They are getting an added electoral boost they don't really deserve. So this is really interesting on that because the whole thing is when you got a lot of um, a lot of um, people are going in illegally, is everything is being comprised and manipulated. So it doesn't matter if they're all white Anglo-Saxons. If they're in there illegally, it is not. It is not. Is pretty unhealthy and it can jeopardize the census, the voting, and so forth. Of course, you got something like Jerry Brown believes um, illegal immigrants have the right to vote. Like, guy's a fucking cockeyed, you know? Go figure. Him and his lackeys in Sacramento. But that's why you have to always got to see things in the bigger picture. And, this, and um, so far as I'm concerned, it's got to be done honorably. And uh, I noticed I did a podcast about. Um, about Judge Donald Patano goes, hey, if they if these people want sanctuary cities, get them where it hurts. Don't give them don't give them any funding. 
and see what happens. They'll probably be all crying, oh, yeah, it's fighting the court, unconstitutional. So you got, there's always a balance factor on that. But the truth of the matter is, because California, because most of the people, why would you shoot Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, she didn't get the majority of the states within the United States. Plain and simple. That's what the Coral College is all about, is balance. If you don't like it, leave your contaminating space. Plain and simple. All right, finally, this one came out from DeathDefense1.com. It came out a, a day or so ago. It says here, main American weapons, war crimes, and the outcry over Yemen. Amana Modin. It says here, Yemen, 21 months, has devastated the country and sparked a humanitarian catastrophe. The U.N. recorded 4,014 killed and thousands more injured by Saudi-led coalition airstrikes between March 2015 and September 2016, carried out with the backing of the U.S. and U.K. The war has displaced 2.2 million Yemenis, while an additional 180,000 have fled the country. Refugees are so desperate, some are fleeing to Somalia. Yemen, already one of the poorest countries in the Middle East, was pulled into the crisis after healthy rebels ousted President Abaruda Mazir Hadi in early 2015. Alarmed by the healthy rebel advances in Yemen, neighboring Saudi Arabia and its allies in a six-member cooperation council called for the United Nations to bring an end to the coup. The Saudi-led coalition quickly began an extraordinary air campaign pounding the rebels in Yemen in a, set, in a desperate bid for reinstate Hadi's government within three months. The Saudi Arabia, Arabia-led coalition have been accused of war crimes, including hitting the Messadine San Antonio Hospital. That's the problem for the U.S. and U.K. who have been selling weapons to Saudi Arabia. Both countries have signed the Arms Trade Treaty, which prohibits selling weapons where it is known they would be used in war crimes. The U.K., which has ratified the ATT, is bound by its rules, while the U.S. cannot undermine its objective as a signatory. A total... Human right in total, Human Rights Watch has documented the use of U.S. weapons in apparent in 23 apparently unlawful coalitions. Airstrike says Paranica Mordopathy, a senior senior emergency researcher for Human Rights Watch, that's quite a significant number. Mordopathy also slams the British government, ignoring overwhelming evidence that there is a high likelihood that U.S. U.K. made weapons could be used in a lawful strike. So what does this overwhelming evidence look like? On May 2015, two months after Saudi Arabia coalition began its campaign, a coalition spokesman announced that the entire city of Assad would be considered a military target and all civilians to, to leave the province. The Human Rights, Human Rights Watch condemned the announcement, arguing that it violates the laws of war prohibition against placed civilians at particular risk by treating a number of separate and distinct military objectives as a single military target. In May, in September 2015, a British made cruise missile was used by a coalition in attack on a Yemeni cer- um, ceramics factory, which killed at least one civilian, according to Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch. Between August and October 2015, Amnesty International found evidence of five unlawful airstrikes on school schools, which killed five civilians and injured at least 14. Amnesty International called on the international community to further investigate these airstrikes. In October 2015, the Saudi-led coalition dropped bombs on Mesidians San Florida Terrace MSF Hospital. Despite having give the hospital coordinates by 2016, the coalition will go back on the attack no less than four MSF hospitals in November 2015, the International Committee of the Red Cross condemned the attacks on healthcare facilities, specifically in Al Thrawad Hospital, one of the main healthcare facilities in Taiz. According to the UN, nearly three quarters, 73% of child's deaths injured during the second quarter of 2015 were caused by airstrikes by the Saudi Arabia led coalition. In May 2016, Embassy International found evidence that US and UK cluster munitions, which released Many indiscriminate small bombless over a wide area were being used by the Saudi Arabia-led coalition force. The UK is a signatory of the Convention on Cluster Munitions, which, is, which prohibits the use, stockpiling, and transfer of cluster bombs. The UK and Saudi Arabia-led coalition first denied the use of cluster mutants, munitions, but would later go on to admit cluster munitions were used. And... Um, August 2016, MSF withdrew its teams from six hospitals in North Yemen, 
following the aerial bomb of Abs Hospital in June in July 2016. Report by Human Rights Watch detailed 17 apparently unlawful airstrikes on a civilian economic sites. Since the 13 civilian economic sites, including factories, commercial warehouses, a farm, and two power facilities, these strikes like 100 civilians and injured 171 more. In August 2016, the Saudi-led coalition bombed a Perpeo factory in the capital of Nahada, Nada district, killing 14 people, working there mostly women. In September 2016, the Yemen Data Project showed that a third of all Saudi Arabia-led air raids in Yemen hit civilian sites such as school buildings, hospitals, and mosques. In October 2016, the Saudi Arabia-led coalition admitted to a bombing and funeral, killing at least 140 people and wounding about 600. Coalition blamed it on wrongful on wrong information. Over the course of the war, the UK and the US have rebuked Saudi Arabia, but last week, the US went to one step further and announced it was limiting arms sales to Saudi Arabia amid concerns over Yemen with a White House spokesman warning Saudi Arabia that U.S. cooperation was not a blank check. Saudi Arabia would later try to just downplay this report. It is the first time you have U.S. officials saying because our concerns about a number of civilian deaths because of our concerns about how the target practices, we are halting this sale of mortar, monoparty I think that me- that message, even if only one sale was halted, is an important one. But the U.S. continuing to provide a huge package of military equipment assistance and advance to the Saudi Arabia, more apathy explains, and despite the evidence of the coalition using cluster bombs, the U.K. reaffirmed its support for Saudi Arabia, insisting the weapons were used against legitimate military targets, U.S. government is the largest arms exporter in the world. So if even it has revelations, reservations, then you know it's time to access Andrew Smith, a spokesperson for the for campaign against arms trade. Like the U.S., the U.K. has licensed billions of pounds worth of arms to Saudi forces. Like the U.S. counterparts, U.K. Comp- air arms companies have fueled and profited from destruction taking place. So this is pretty damn sick. And far as I'm concerned, these are considered war crimes. Regardless, it's totally unacceptable. And many of the folks here know I'm very critical of Yemen, the attack on Yemen. And I don't give a damn what kind of allegations I hear. It is totally condemning. I condemn this with a passion. And I don't give two craps what people think. Plain and simple. This has to stop. And piss on their New World Order agenda. That is all for now, my friends. Thanks for listening. Plus, feel free to download and uh, share this through social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you want to send me something that's interesting, please let me know. It'd be great. Whatever you do, I like to please always address your uh, correspondence with the core. You keep me on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Tumblr, YouTube, Freedoms Network, and Scene.Life. Minds.com coming soon around January. Try to make that happen. Or you can email me at LokiLuck3, which is LokiLuck, the number three, at gmail.com. I just wish everyone there a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and a prosperous New Year. Hope be safe out there for the holidays and try to go over strenuous on your shopping needs. Be more spiritual than ever before because that will be uh, great and bring positive energies to within your environment, including your loved ones. All right, my friends? Doesn't matter what your creed is as well. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the demoniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love, and may your guardian spirits be with you.